live on digital television, The Show, celebrating the best girls basketball players in Colorado. The Show, a presentation of Biocat Sports Network, producers of showcase events and academic elite camps for student athletes. Basketball, volleyball, soccer, football, and baseball. Biocats.com. And right now, we'll turn our attention to the public address announcer for the starters and the national anthem here at Mesa, uh, Metropolitan State University of Denver. From Metropolitan State University of Denver, this is a chance to see the top 20 girls high school 4A and 5A basketball players in the state of Colorado. Hello everybody, Mary Kay Morrow. Thrilled to be with you here courtside for some terrific action. This is a chance, these are players who, many of them play against each other during the school year and a lot of them play uh, against and with each other in the summers and it's a chance that they can have a little bit of fun. Some of them headed to the next level. Some of them still have a little bit of high school eligibility left as student athletes. And uh, we are thrilled to have uh, some of the best of the best on the floor tonight. And coaches have been uh, amazing that we have. We've got Lakewood High School's Chris Poisson, who after uh, eight years, actually he's uh, in his ninth year, and he uh, took his Lakewood squad to its fifth grade eight, its second final four, losing to a Regis Jesuit. And then on the other side, Shannon Lane. Boy, Shannon Lane has had quite the run at Pueblo South. She is a, a, a Pueblo South alum, was part of the 94 championship team. Seven title appearances, five championships for Pueblo South and Shannon Lane's team has been runners up the last two years to Evergreen. She is being co-head coached here tonight with Jessica Caldwell, the head coach at Valor Christian, who in the last four years has two state championships for Valor Christian. And we are underway. We've got a white team and a blue team for the blue. The blue We'll talk about their starters. And with the ball right now from Highlands Ranch, the junior Autumn Watch hands it to her, her point guard, Tommy Olson. It's stolen by Fran Belibi, lays it up and good from Regis High School. So Fran Belibi 
an All-State player for the second year in a row and just her 31st month of playing basketball. That's right, she is a tennis player. And on the board from Cherry Creek, the sophomore, Jana Van Geitenbeek, two years in a row, a first-team All-State selection. And quickly, a 3-2 lead for the Blue. Mech, that's Sydney Mech from Cherry Creek as well. Senior with the ball, uses the left hand and glides it in. Mech headed to the University of Denver to play for Jim Sturgeon. Turgeon, rather. Here's a long ranger. Oh, Fran Believy is feeling it. From behind the arc is Believy. Light on her feet, gets a high five from her 6'4 teammate, Noel Cunningham, number four in white. 5-5 five, five right now here. We're tied up here early. And another three ball. And that comes from Autumn Watts. So now Watts gets in the act, and Watts a Highlands Ranch Jr. What she's got in common with Van Geitenbeek and also the likes of Avery Van Sickle. You'll be seeing her shortly. And also Fran Belibi, all four of them played U16 USA basketball and won the gold in Argentina just last summer. So these kids know each other that play some summer ball together. Tommy Olsen dishes. That's two point guards, folks. Oh, a lob into Cam Camille Emsbo from Lakewood, an All-State player as well. And it was intercepted by Belibi, who goes coast to coast, showing that leaping ability. Fran Belibi loses it out of bounds. So, you know, interesting with these all-star games it they're competitive because all the players want to show well as that's that hence the name the show however the other thing is you want to have a little fun a little fun when there's not so much at stake and there's a, a camille emsbo pulling up for the 10 foot j emsbo what a fantastic career she along with her sister kira who's been injured all uh, since october they are headed to the Ivy League. Camille headed to Yale and Kira headed to Princeton. And you know it was tough for Camille to be w without her sis, but a lot of adjustments, Coach Poisson said, they changed and Lakewood still made a charge back to the semis. So there was a chance to see Avery Van Sickle, who's been amazing, the freshman, a 5'10 player who had over 53s this season. Averages 11 points a game, shoots 80% from the free throw line, makes that bucket to bring the white squad a few points closer. And Camille Emsbo gets fouled and she's at the line for the end one. So Emsbo, tough player to guard at 6'5", huge wingspan. Oh, baseball pass, Belibi. Taking advantage of Van Sickle, her high school teammate, going long and a little bit too long. So in blue, number two is Jana Van Geitenbeek, the sophomore from Cherry Creek. With the ball is number five, Tommy Olson, a senior with Highlands Ranch. Number one is Mech. Number three is Autumn Watts. Mech's from Cherry Creek, Watts from Highlands Ranch. And Emsbo, number four, and there was Belibi. Coming in with a nice fast break opportunity. So Bolivian White is number one. Her teammate from Regis, number four, Cahill, and number eight, Van Sickle. All from Regis Jesuit. And now in for the White, number five, Chloe Welch from Mesa Ridge, who had a great run, made it to the semifinals. She is headed to Davidson. She's number five in White. With the ball is Van Sickle, the freshman. Cahill's number four in white for the white. Number four from Regis, I should say, Regis Jesuit. She's in white. And number six, you'll be, she's out of your screen at the moment. She's going to walk in right there at the top of your screen. Number six, Jaden Galloway, the senior for Grandview, the Wolves, two time now. Defending Colorado High School 5A state champions and Jade Galloway is going to get some good experience on this floor. She will continue her education and her playing days right here for head coach Tanya Jave and the Metropolitan State Roadrunners. Free throw good and Cahill had an outstanding 
last half of the season for the Regis Raiders. She very steady, plugs up the middle. She and Belibi now taking a seat as we've got changes. Now in for the white, Ashley Stefik, the terrific, number nine, the terrific guard from Fossil Ridge. Joining her, number 10, Michaela Eisenbart. And Eisenbart a, from Kit Carson, a 1A school, has been recruited by the University of Colorado. She'll play for Cami Etheridge, who, boy, in the big sky, terrific season under a lot of adversity. Nine players, and they ended up winning not only the big sky, but also the big sky tournament, making it to the program's first NCAA appearance. Lost by only 14 to the University of Michigan in the first round. With the ball and the white, Riley Snyder, and Snyder is gonna wreak some havoc in there. Snyder, you see her number three, a six foot guard. Another one, tough to guard, very active. Three sport athlete, plays volleyball, runs track. We'll have a chance to talk to her mother. Lori here a little bit later in the broadcast as her mom, also a three-four sport athlete, back in high school at Golden High School. Van Geitenbeek with the basketball, loses it off her foot against Galloway. Galloway, who led her team with three steals per outing on Van Geitenbeek with the ball. Outside it goes. Here's a long-range shot on the way, in and out by Alyssa Jimenez. Jimenez, number eight in blue, comes from Horizon, and what a year she and the Horizon Hawks had. You'll be seeing her teammate pretty soon in Sam Dean, number nine. She'll be coming out here shortly. They were a great combination for Coach Dan Doler as they made it to uh, the grade eight for the second year in a row. Van Steffick who's a great perimeter shooter, trying to, to model herself after Savannah Smith, who graduated from Fossil Ridge four years ago and was a key player for Northern Colorado with Savannah Scott and Kiara, Kiana Williams. They were fantastic this year in the Big Sky. And, and Steffick said that she spends a lot of summers uh, with Savannah Smith. So she's, she's learning from one of uh, Colorado's best players. There's a miss and a rebound. And that rebound coming from Sam Dean in the game, number nine in blue. There's the runner with the ball. Number 10, and this was an addition here today, and that is Madison Hema, number 10. And Hema is a junior at Castleview, her dad, Matt, is the head coach, her mom, an assistant, and mom played at uh, UCCS, uh, Colorado Springs, uh, under, at the time, uh, Coach Carl Maddy. And you know, a lot of you are saying, well, I thought he was head coach at Regis Jesuit. He is, he's, he's the one and only. He's been there for 14 years, but prior to that, he was at Douglas County in prior, high school, that is. Prior to that, he coached at UCCS, and Sarah, uh, Madison Hemma's mom, played there. In, You'll have a chance to watch her uh, another year in the high school ranks, and she's got some fun things, and she's got the ball right now. Shot from the baseline, it just misses. Rebound on the other side by Eisenbart. So another thing about Madison Hema is that she will have a chance to try out for the New Zealand national team, because her dad is from New Zealand, and tremendous experience. You know, talking to head coach uh, Tanya Jave from Metropolitan State University, Denver, she said, you know, we are looking at her as a potential to come here as a road runner, road runners. Oh, made it to the NCAA D2 regionals, and it's their uh, first appearance in four years under head coach Tanya Jave, who was in her eighth year, and made it to the second round, defeated uh, CSU Pueblo in round one and lost in round two, in a tough, tough game, Texas a and Park Commerce. There's a turnaround by Belibi. Oh, my, Belibi really feeling good. And just in rhythm here early, Autumn watches. I'm gonna take it and shoot. 
Nisenbart starts it the other way. Well, look at the score. It's a high scoring one. That's what you uh, expect in, a, in an all-star game. Little defense. I know some of you are like, what? Yeah, yeah. It, it happens even in the high school ranks. Little defense in these kind of games. But so fun for them to be out there. It's close. It's just a two-point lead for the White now. First quarter is winding down a steal. And Tommy Olsen, the steal was by, by Van Sickle. Olsen unable to convert on the left side using their right hand. And Tommy Olsen coming in at about 5'5". Five, five. She's going to walk in for uh, Joe Ligurski over there at University of Wyoming. Terrific program in the Mountain West. About three, uh, three to three and a half hours northwest of the Denver metro area. So folks will be able to get to see Tommy Olsen, hopefully she makes that team. There's a long ranger and just entering the game comes uh, uh, Miss Lucero. And Gabby Lucero, one of Coach Lane's uh, premier players, takes the last shot, misses it. We'll step aside, quarter one under, or in the books. We'll be back, it's the show on Streaming Sports. Welcome back to Metropolitan State University of Denver. Mary Kay Morrow, please be joined by the head coach of the Roadrunners, who uh, finished a, just a terrific season. And coach Tanya Jave, congratulations Thank on you. a great Thank run this you. season. Thank you. It's fun it, here. Tell us a little bit about a once. Okay, you made it to the semifinals of the of the conference tournament, and and because of your record, it, it just it had an outstanding league season. Got the at large bid. And tell us from there how it went. So we were, we had been ranked, uh, they ranked teams the last three weeks of the season, and we had been ranked fifth. And so when we lost to Black Hills in the semifinals, it dropped us to sixth, which made us, we were the sixth seed, and then Pueblo was the number three seed. So we played Pueblo in that first round, which is okay. It was nice that it was a familiar opponent. But, uh, and then we were fortunate enough to win that game to go on, which was really great. I think you could think, you could see some of the pressure come off our, our players' faces. Then we get to play West Texas a and seeded second, and we played really well. We competed with them, just we tied with five minutes left in the game, and then just had a couple, they got a couple stops, they scored a couple times, and then that, that that's how quickly it happens. It's just a couple plays here and there, but I was really proud of how we competed and it would have been nice to get that one more round, and you never know what happens because it is the NCAA tournament. So, but it was just a really fun experience for our players. So happy for our seniors that were able to experience the NCAA tournament, and for our underclassmen that got a taste of it. Now, that that goal is now, hey, we want to get back to the NCAA tournament. You know, and so important. And, and you had the chance as uh, the head coach here few years back to take a team to the Elite Eight. Yeah. And so, you know, that not only is great for recruiting, but just building that uh, kind of pedigree for the program so that when student athletes are looking around for opportunities, you know, it becomes a consideration in the, in, in the state when they're looking around for programs. How would an appearance like this now and, ha and how well you're, like Jaden Galloway now is going to be a student athlete playing and going to school here. How important is that for your program? Well, I think it's huge because they, they see that, that you're winning and you're doing well and and we're be able to attract the, the local talent. And you know, people might say, well, oh, you're finally recruiting Colorado kids. We've been recruiting Colorado players all along since I've been here. And now I think we're finally knocking on the door. We've got some kids that we feel like are great fits for our program. And I think that's only gonna, you know, you get to a point where players start recruiting players, people start talking. They go back to their high schools. So I think with this recruiting class, um, those players haven't officially signed yet, so I can't really be that specific sure. with them yet. Sure. But um, 
really, really excited about the players that we're getting that are coming in. And our success locally is, you know, you can't state enough of the importance of what that is. I'm sure. And what you offer here, too, because, you, you know, you're a Colorado kid yourself. So right. coming from uh, Evergreen High School and then uh, going on to not only college but pro before you started your coaching career at CU and been around Regis, every DU and right. San Francisco. <laughs> more, and yeah. guess what, though? Colorado but, schools. But yeah. You, yeah, but you know the Colorado kids. So a game like this, when you when these when these uh, players, a lot of them play uh, with each other during the school year. A lot of them in the summer or play against each other. Um, it, it, certainly, it's kind of like a. Um, kind of a pride thing, but what what will they gain from this uh, if if nothing else more than maybe some camaraderie and some reps? I think the camaraderie, the experience, the memories that will create, you know, we've talked to a few of the kids that have played in earlier games and talked to some of the players, certainly the players that we're familiar with after the game. They've all had such a great time, so it's a great memory for them uh, to have this and to get recognized for the, the hard work that they've put in and kind of that satisfaction of getting that reward to play in a game like this and against the top players in the state. So I think it's a great memory for them, like you said, the camaraderie. And, you know, maybe speak to, you know, the the uh, balance of the academic side when they go to the next level. What, what do they have to look forward to now? Now that they're, <laughs> yeah. you know, not, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's the speed of the game, sure, but they're going to have to balance their academics when they, when they go to the next level. And, Many of them here will be moving on. And the biggest thing with the academic slash athletic piece of it is time management, is that their time management is not only does the speed of the game or the intensity of their practices for the athletic piece, but the intensity of the academics probably goes up and what what is expected of them on the academic side. So everything is get gets ratcheted up a, a piece and so a, a notch. And so they're gonna need to we talk to our players, incoming players, a lot about time management. You know, and, it's, and so coming into next year, coming off such a, a great year, and as you said, brought some momentum to your program. Um, what can we expect for the 18-19 uh, yes. Roadrunners? I, I can you believe we're saying 2018-19? No, I <laughs> When I'm just saying even 18, but oh, then you man. go into 18 slash 19. Oh, you just, I like, tell you. It seemed like yesterday it was the turn of the century at yeah. 2000. So our team will look different. We lose a lot of scoring, but we still return uh, our point guard. We have some shooters. We've got some good experience from the bench. We'll, we'll definitely be younger. We'll be a different look, but I think the leadership that we're going to have and with our freshmen, I think our freshmen are going to be able to contribute right away. So it'll be a different look in terms of personnel, but I think the same style of play, we still want to continue up-tempo, defending, rebounding. So I think we'll be able to, especially with uh, the young lady from Grandview is going to be able to uh, put some pressure on the ball for us. Yeah, so fun to see her. One of many times she'll be running up and down yes. this floor. And then you'll be losing Georgia underneath, but you've got some uh, players who have been working. To, to move yes, yeah. yes, we've got a sophomore from California, Bree Wellington, who played an outstanding game, was to that level in a, the regional semifinal against West Texas A&M, and was able to compete with that, the talent they had. So very excited. And then we're looking to sign, we'd look to sign a kind of a bulky yeah. or four or five player, because that's the one thing that we didn't have an answer for at that level that I knew we would, um, that we needed, and we had that. But one of those players kind of decided she didn't want to play basketball three weeks into the season. So we know what we need. We know what that, how to construct that team. So we're, we're in the process now of really why we're at this game. We were just in love. We went back down to Lubbock oh, to, for the Junior College National Championships. So we were able to see some posts there. So we definitely want to, you know, have that inside presence coming back. Yeah, well, we expect good things. And we'll, we'll definitely be yes. watching. Thank so. you so much, Ray. Thanks so much. Thanks and so great, much for having me on. You've been really great, great for the Roadrunners to uh, program, to host this at uh, Metropolitan State. Well, we love having Denver. everybody here. And, and Jerry Howard's done a great job with the event. So we're looking forward to it. I know last year was the first year. We got the second year. Hope we can keep this, in, yeah. this tradition going. You bet. Congratulations again Thank on the you season. So much. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. That was the Metropolitan State University of Denver Roadrunners. Head coach Tanya Jave spending some time with us here on the broadcast. And you see our score as uh, the white team is, or the blue team is up 20 
to 14 over the white and running up and down for lots of activity. Blue with the ball now. Driving, that's Autumn Watts. And Autumn Watts, so athletic. You see her strong first move to the basket. She is a tough player to guard, another one. And that's why a lot of these players are out here. They create for themselves. They make it difficult. They stretch defenses. Watts, who plays for Karen Jaraki at Highlands Ranch, who surpassed 600 wins. The winningest girls basketball coach at any level in the state of Colorado. Program has won seven state titles and lost in the semifinals this year against Grandview. A 57-56, that one could have gone either way. That was just so, such a good game. Highland Ranch ahead most of it. Grandview with that will to win down the stretch. Here's a long ranger by Stefik that falls short. Tommy. Olsen loves to push pace, finds Mech on the baseline, can't get it to go. Mech's so long, you see her number one. Third opportunity, and Hema finds the bottom of the net. Now a first double digit lead, and the blue out in front by 10. Stefik with the ball, hands it over to Chloe Welch. Welch. Quickly gets to Eisenbart. Nice move to the basket. Eisenbart. Gonna be a nice piece for Coach Etheridge. Have the freshman come up there. Comes in at about 6-1. Long ranger by Olsen. She can pull the trigger. Another one just like Van Sickle from Regis. Over 50 trays on the season. Outstanding high school career for Tommy Olsen. And Gabby Lucero, a junior. Her head coach, Shannon Lane. Shannon Lane uh, is on the bench with Jessica Caldwell of Valor Christian. And what a terrific semifinal game for by Lucero. Really put the, the clamps on Mesa Ridge to help propel Pueblo South to its second consecutive appearance in the state finals. And came up short again to Evergreen. And Autumn Watts showing us some range, stretching the defense, getting her second triple in the half. And Lucero, boy, she is a workhorse underneath, a tough six foot, and driving is Van Sickle, and she is promptly rejected by Chloe Welch. Blue is doing a great job on the boards, watch. Watts, rather. And sneaks in, and then finally Lucero says, I've had enough. Oh, Welch on the reverse. And Mech ticketed with the foul, so Welch will head to the free throw line. And Chloe Welch, who, as we said, played hard for Mesa Ridge this season. Mesa Ridge falling short in the semifinals. Against Pueblo South, and that's a team that uh, you know they face once a, during the they face about once a year. Lucero, nice uh, minutes there. She takes a seat. So Welch sinks one of two. Cahill will return. She's going to the University of Pennsylvania, so she will be in that Ivy League against the Emsbo sisters. And first time for Kira and Camilla to be at different schools. Kira headed to Princeton. Miller headed to Yale, and a beautiful three-pointer. That's why the, the freshman, you see her right there, stretching the defense, nobody on her. And Ash, is, or Avery Van Sickle, as we said, she had over 53 pointers on the, on the season. Tommy Olsen's another one. Can she launch it and make it? Gets it off before the buzzer, but it falls just off the iron. But the blue will go into the locker room with a seven-point edge, so the white showing some uh, toughness down the stretch of the second quarter. All right, we'll step aside. We'll have more guests hoping to come coming up. Riley Snyder's mom and also Van Geitenbeek's, uh, one of the guys, Van Geitenbeek's. You're watching the show on Stream It Sports.
Welcome back to the show. It's the blue team up 29 to 22 at the break. Mary Kay Morrow pleased to be joined by the white head coach Shannon Lane out of Pueblo South, the Colts. And Coach Man, 10th year, back to back appearances in the state <laughs> title game. I Fell know, short to I the know. same, same team. team. Y'all got it. Amy Ball brings <laughs> that Evergreen team. Oh, so <laughs> first of all, tell us a little, bit, a little bit about the state tournament and just, yeah. I mean, and, and, and really the program from Pueblo South has really been strong. I mean, obviously you're an alum, you were on a championship team. They've got yeah. five in, yeah. I think, seven tries. I know, the legacy of it. It's Eight wonderful. tries, actually. Yeah, yeah. very true. And uh, just, just blessed to be a part of that, you know, legacy in some sort of way as a player, as a coach. And um, I don't know, you just you fall in love with these girls coming through your program and you love them, you know? You know, how do you, you start a season, you get some adversity with some injuries or illnesses throughout the way, which, you know, all teams face it at some point, it's just to what degree. Right, right. Um, but how does how do you transform your teams from, you know, maybe uh, either kind of broken up quite what you thought. Right, right. And you really have to work with what you have. Right. And kids have to step up. What? What happens? What is it about the culture that, man, all of a sudden when it comes, you know, all of a sudden it, January turns to February and, you know, and this team and program just all of a sudden, man, they're headed for the Coliseum well, somehow. The girls are funny. I mean, they are. <laughs> and, you know, I guess with me being a female, I, I get this. But, you know, I'll tell them a lot of times in, in January, usually the end of January, beginning of February, um, my team falls apart and says, you know, they, they don't think I love them anymore. And you know how girls are, and it's the relationship piece. And you have to get back. It, it usually takes a good two weeks to get them out of that. They get tired of each other. They've been together since November. They nitpick on each other. They drive each other crazy. And I think um, it, it requires a lot of team bonding during that time. And you'll see, you'll see teams that start really strong to start the season. And then you see them later on, and they've fallen apart. And a lot of that truly, I feel, with at least females, is relationship-based. I do. Um, I think when the girls really fall in love with each other, and they're out there playing for each other and not for themselves, you see a team that comes along. And so your team's not playing bad, or if your team's playing bad, you got to ask yourself that question about your athletes. And sometimes it's a tough conversation to have with them. But um, it opens their eyes. It does. So I don't know. We were just fortunate this year to, to be able to come along when we did. We're happy. We're happy about it. And we'll see about next year. Yeah, you, you pieced know? it together at the right time. Last yeah. year, Gabby Lucero, your star center, who's just just powerful underneath. She was injured in that state tournament game. She so was. she was healthy this year. She was. And it was nice to see her healthy even throughout the year. I know even at the beginning of the year, she was a little scared. She got a concussion early on. And you know, you just don't know how your knee's gonna hold up. You don't know if that cartilage took and we didn't know if she's gonna have a knee transplant. I mean, we went through a lot with her. I didn't know if she was gonna play this year. So just to have her come back and I think now she feels a little more stable on it. She's Good. excited. And now yeah. she's a, a junior, she's a so junior. is she undecided she's or she has some, what are her prospects or can we even undecided. go there? I mean, she's <laughs> playing club ball and you know, they're, they're, they'll be offering. We've got some some on the table now, some college coaches at least talking and, and watching her and we'll see. We'll see where she wants to go, you know. You know, and she played against, um, help me out, the, the center for um, yeah, Mesa Claudia. Ridge, Claudia. Oh, no, oh. Um, that, was, that was Evergreen. Ever, yes, not Claudia, but, but the, um, um, in the semis. Yes, she did. Um, Jacob, was it? No, uh, I feel bad Texas. I didn't get no, that. Yes, she did. I know, I had it too. Uh, um, but she just, you know, and that was a person who, oh my God, like 6'4". Yeah. And yeah. probably, so you look at Cahill, who was out here, number four in white. She was still even bigger than her. Right, right. And she's solid. And you solid. Know, she's solid. But, um, and a finisher. She's the same age as Gabby, and they've kind of played together. You know, she came from Alabama her freshman year. I remember when she came, and her dad's in the military. And uh, I think she, she ended up heading back to Texas. Her dad got uh, oh, wow. restationed, and so um, she won't be in Colorado anymore, which is sad because I was excited to see her and Gabby kind of Yeah, that go was just quite again. the battle. Yes, but, yeah, yes. Gabby actually got the best of her. Uh -huh. Really showed some athleticism and speed around her. Right. Bo, Bo, there Bo you go. thank I you. I was saying Jacob, yeah, yeah so crazy. thank you. <laughs> yes. Good for thinking of that. Yes. So real quick, you know, yeah. and we'll uh, talk, uh, talk, uh, tell people a little bit about Southern Colorado basketball this year, three of the four teams right. in the finals were from the South. They were either from Pueblo or right. from Colorado Springs. Yeah. 
And what is going on? Because Colorado Springs has become such a hotbed for volleyball, as we know the success with Doherty and Lewis Palmer and Colorado Springs Christian. So much success down there now. Not that it wasn't there before for basketball, but it right. seems like it's it's jumped again. Yeah, you know, I think it just uh, it goes in cycles. It really does. I think uh, it always used to be we were excited to get up north to play some northern teams, and now we go up north to play southern teams. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway, it's just, you know, this is just an exciting game for these girls to be able to play. And I don't know, I, I love to watch them just like that that play right there. And to see, see, we don't, in 4A, we don't really get to, oh, uh, they gave it to her to go. Um, <laughs> Believe me, for the dunk, Got so thing. actually that yes. was Van Guytenbeek nice. who fed her. I know. <laughs> <laughs> wanting to give people a show. They want her to dunk. I know. She's gonna try it one more time. You she know she will. is sometime tonight. She's yes. got a couple under her belt. She had her first one as a freshman at 15. I know. And then she's gonna go in the dunk contest, I think, against the boys. I think. Nice. So, we'll have yeah. to. Yeah, we'll have to see that. So. Yeah. It's neat because I don't get to see five eight kids. So when okay. I first came so here, I had to. Uh, I had to introduce myself and get to know some of these girls. And I've always wanted to, to see them play. I mean, look how athletic they So, are. and then this is a really good experience for these kids yeah. and for the coaches. Yeah, and you've got kids going to Air Force and UNC. And, I mean, it's it's just great. Somebody's going to Penn and yeah. uh, see Missouri. Well, Davidson, as Davidson, we said, Chloe's yeah. Chloe's going to Davidson. What a great guard she is. I mean, there's Jay, Gal Jay Gal yeah. Galloway, who's going to play right here at, at yep. Ma Metropolitan at Metro. State yeah, University, I to Denver. Tanya about Tanya. Her. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. so good stuff. Well, yeah. we sure appreciate Thanks. you stopping by the broadcast, and Thank good luck you. again. I always appreciate I know the, you and the all you do. Oh, you're Sorry. welcome. We're, yeah, we, we love to be able to uh, definitely support coaches, players, programs like you have in schools because it really is is what it's all about is 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 that experience for these student athletes. Congratulations on what you do, Thanks. and good luck. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. All right, that was head coach Shannon Lane from Pueblo South, the Colts, her assistant. Actually, she's not her assistant. It's a co-head coach situation, and that's Valor Christian's head coach, Jessica Caldwell, who was uh, a star at Coronado High School in Colorado Springs. So we've got a couple of uh, Colorado, former Colorado High School coaches giving back and coaching. And she went on to play at Baylor, and her Baylor team lost uh, last night in the Sweet 16 to Oregon State in an upset. And uh, boy, she had a terrific career at Baylor. All right, we got subs coming in. Emsbo comes back in for Autumn Watts, who continues to light it up, had her third three-point basket of the evening. Now at the line is freshman Avery Van Sickle, who, as we said, played on part of that uh, U USA U16 squad. Welch looks, oh, nice B line. And that's Van Sickle trying to get the lay in. In blue, number eight, Jimenez, and she tried to defend Welch on the perimeter, and the rebound goes to Deem. So Deem. And Deem is undecided from Horizon. She's a terrific player. Had some injury issues last year in the, in the game against Grandview. But she has one more year. She's been strong for Coach Dan Doler. Van Sickle with the ball against Van Geitenbeek. The Vans. Three baller against three baller. And Van Sickle right in her face. They're smiling. They're teammates in the summer. Blue still has that lead. Van Geinbeek says, give me a chance. I'm going to go right back at you. Just misses it. And a player you know I want to note, uh, make note of who's not playing on the white uh, team but is on the bench is Delaney Byrne. And Delaney Byrne two years ago played at Broomfield High School, was a star 3-4 uh, player for Broomfield, transferred to Ralston Valley, didn't play last year, played this year, and then got injured. And so uh, saw limited action in the semifinal game when Ralston Valley lost to its arch nemesis in the Jeff Colleagues Lakewood under Coach Poisson, as we said, is coaching the blue team. Um, Delaney Byrne is uh, on the bench. She is a second team all, all state. 
a player, and she will continue her education and her playing days at Minnesota next season. And Byrne is a, a, a just has, stretches defense, long player, wiry. Can shoot the three and get to the hoop in a hurry. Van Geitenbeek sneaks in, the sophomore who's going to Stanford. And her mom and dad, uh, Carol and Tony Van Geitenbeek, also athletes. And they have a son, Cody, pitches for Army and got his first win today. There's a nice finish as Mech, who was injured last year for Coach Kernin, who after 30 years is uh, hanging it up as a coach. At Cherry Creek, spent seven of those uh, 30 years at Cherry Creek. And last year, Mech was injured, had a meniscus issue, came back full strength this year to help Cherry Creek get back to the grade eight. She will continue her education at the University of Denver under Coach Turgeon. And I've learned that uh, Courtney Smith, who played at the University of Northern Colorado, is transferring to the University Denver and Madison Hema hits from downtown another three-point basket. That's going to be the sixth triple for the Blue Squad. Fancisco's Van Sickle to Cahill on the perimeter. Emsbo on her at 6-5 against 6-4. Welch between the legs going to dish. Nice drive and dish. Open on the side was Eisenbart from Kit Carson. Got 111 to go in the third. And Chloe Welch from Mesa Ridge High School. Colorado Springs, one of the four, one of the three teams from the south that we were talking to Coach Lane about. And how uh, tough Southern Colorado has been the past few years in basketball. Doherty last year in 5A made it to the grade eight. Welch makes the second one. We'll have boys action coming up next too, and my partner in crime of broadcasting is Marty Cesario. He will be on the call for the boys. Top 20 blue and white squads in four and five A. We've had the, the pleasure of bringing you the seniors, the one A, two A, three A game, also the top 40 teams. So a lot of these players who are out there, their teammates played on that. Izzy Allen from Horizon, a teammate of Sam Dean, and also Alyssa Jimenez. Eisenbart misses that one. Mech with the board. Run and gun and push and pace. As we said, Tommy Olson. She likes to pull the trigger. Autumn Watts, who's got three trays on the, the evening, gets stuffed and travels. So Van Sickle comes up this way. Van Sickle averaged 11 points a game this year. Her mom played basketball, her sister. Played at Calvin College. She'll step back over Olsen, can't get it to go. And Hema hands to Olsen who will push. Heads it to her teammate, Watts. Watts now with 15. So Watts on the blue. We haven't seen Fran Belibi here. Uh, in the latter part of the third quarter. She was uh, hot in that first quarter as Belibi led all scores on the Whites team with nine points at the break. Olsen giving it to Emsbo. She's gonna try the triple, can't get it to go, and a 13-point lead for the Blue. We've got eight more minutes of the All-Star game. It's the show for a 5A right here on Stream It Sports.
Fourth quarter action underway. Jaden Galloway, as we said, she will spend a lot of time going up and down this court for Coach Tanya Have. Next year's Roadrunner. Drives, dishes back, three ball on the way, and Van Sickle can't get it to go, but Gabby Lucero just love the way she plays. She's a tough one underneath. Battles and intercepted by Olsen, and a foul ensues. So be blue ball. So you had two Highlands Ranch kids on the players, rather, player, players on the floor, and that's Autumn Watts and Tommy Olson. Two from Cherry Creek, Sydney Mech and Jana Van Geitenbeek. Two from Horizon, Sam Deem and Alyssa Jimenez from Horizon. And both Jimenez and Deem are juniors, so you know Horizon will be back in the hunt next year. Galloway, head fake, takes Olsen to the glass. And she's fouled. You see that quick step. Boy, she's got lightning speed, speed around the corner. And uh, looking to help out the road runners in a run for next year. All right, so she's at the line. And uh, two-time state champion. Last year had the pleasure of doing it with uh, Michaela Onyemwer, a three-time Gatorade player of the year for Colorado. Now a freshman playing at UCLA as the Bruins have moved on to the Elite Eight. And then her teammate, Layla Vigil, will move on to, to UNKC next year, University of Missouri, Kansas City. Believe me back in, trying to make sure that Mech didn't get it in, but the blue not only gets it in, but gets down the court in a hurry. Mech cross court, here's open, D, uh, that's Hema. And Sickle on the rebound. And Belibi with the, the bucket. Belibi now in double digits. Watts again. Continues to light it up. Riley Schneider, Air Force Academy. What a find for them. She's an outstanding student athlete. Puts in a three-pointer. She could easily play volleyball at the next level, but she's chosen basketball. She'll be down at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Six foot guard, part of about a dozen, about a half a dozen kids, about six uh, student athletes from Fruit of Monument in, on, in uh, Western, rather, in the Western Slope. And they were Southwest League champions several years in a row, and six of them played since junior, or rather middle school, I was gonna say the junior leagues, and middle school together. Under and then made it to high school and under Mike Wells and fantastic teams finally made it to the grade eight. Lost to Fossil Ridge and Steffick and company. But boy, what an outstanding career. Timeout on the floor. We'll step aside too. 6.28 to go. Whites closing in. Back to live action, and the blue will set up at the free throw line. Coach Poisson, boy, he has had just an incredible run at Lakewood. In his 10th year, he's had five grade eights, two semifinals, one state title appearance last year, losing to Grandview. And just, you, you know, he coached at Stanley Lake. He also assisted his dad at Arvada for the boys team. And then when he took over at Lakewood, his dad retired and helped him at, as an assistant at Lakewood. 
And then um, two years ago, they lost uh, one of their star guards um, who was headed to Regis University in um, Mackenzie Forest. And she, along with Michaela Bishop, Big Mac and Little Mac, Mac they called them, were headed to Regis University. And unfortunately, the day after the state tournament two years ago, uh, Michaela, uh, Mackenzie rather, Forrest, uh, died in a car accident. Then two months later, Coach Poisson's dad died as well. So they've had a lot of adversity. This team's gone through a lot. But he said, you know, mentally, he said, this group has gone with the flow. And he said, it, you know, it won't make uh, the, the stage, like when they get to the grade eight, it's such a, a different atmosphere. He said, we've gone through so much. We just have learned to pull together and surpass expectations. And they did it again this year when Camilla Embsbow's sister, Kira Embsbow, who he, Coach Poisson said she had an excellent club season last summer, was stronger and really starting, and was close to a double-double in October when she went down and had an ACL tear and ended up having surgery. He said, just as we were getting used to getting that uh, formula back, and so it was tough uh, adjustment, but he said they had to make another adjustment. He, they got the cohesion back, they got healthy in February and were confident moving into the playoffs and they got back to the, the final four. So terrific year and just a, you know, Tiger Nation, uh, very resilient. Mech, another one who we said had a meniscus tear. She is headed to the University of Denver, hands it to them. Oh my, Camilla Emsbo. Talk about stretching defenses. She tears them up on the ins inside. Emsbo, just shy of a double-double this year, averaging over 17 a game. Mech with the steal, she's got numbers. Passes to Emsbo, uses the left hand against Belibi. Levy. You know, just a couple of hops, and she gets down the court in a hurry. We said this is her 31st month of playing basketball. <laughs> she hasn't even been playing three years. And she's got, she's narrowed it now. She's got D1 looks from about four different schools, Stanford being one of them. Outstanding student. Both her parents doctors. Uh, she is a tennis player. She's an all-state tennis player. She said, and then her experience on the USA U16 team this past summer, she said, you know, I learned a lot of leadership. Brought that back to the squad, Regis. She was one of three players who fouled out in that fourth quarter against Grandview in the championship this year. She, along with sophomore guard Jada Moore, uh, fouled out. And they, they, and also Van Sickle. So they had three who fouled out, three starters. And it uh, really made it tough. They lost 61 to 67 to 61. And Grandview went on for a second championship. A player who did not make it tonight was Alicia Davis. And Davis, an incredible junior. She, uh, from Grandview, she helped lead the team when, when V Hill went out with five minutes to go. She helped lead the team uh, along with uh, Galloway and Marlette and company to that victory for a repeat title. And Davis is a blocking machine. She had 87 as a freshman. She will definitely be playing somewhere at the next level, but she's got one more year. So she's been a starter for four years. Has always been in the shadow of somebody. It was Michaela Onyenware for her first two years and played with uh, V Hill last year. But next year, you know, uh, she's gonna set the, the pace. And she actually did a great job of establishing herself and her leadership in that championship. This uh, Jimenez, number eight in blue, being guarded by Galloway. Oh, and Geitenbeek. Splash from three-point land, hurt second tray. Quickly, that seven-point lead is now 15 for the blue. Cahill against Imsbo. They're gonna play against each other next year in the Ivy League. Cahill at Penn, Camilla at Yale. Ashley Steffick now in number nine in white against Van Geitenbeek with the ball. Van Geitenbeek, some of her great skills are that you see her change direction well. Poised. Makes good decisions. 
and then can, can take it to the glass, step back and hit the three, but more importantly, her vision down the court. She can make no-look passes. Started that as a freshman and actually started for Cherry Creek last year as a freshman, replacing uh, Allison, the point guard before, who sat on, who came off the bench her senior year, but understood her role as Van Geitenbeek was not only the future, but the best player to put in that point position. And Van, Ge Van, Van Geitenbeek, he saw the, the fake to the right, glides in for two more. She's got five in a row. Three ball by Welch goes awry. Van Geitenbeek says, I'm just gonna take it and run again. She's gonna pull for another three, this one's short. And it's run and gun, or as uh, Irv Brown would say, shirts and skins, but we're just gonna say shirts and shirts. <laughs> and I hope Irv takes that as a compliment, because he started that, that saying many years ago. And, and Irv has helped so many of us in this broadcast arena do what we do today. And he's still at it, got a chance to see Irv just uh, last month. Um, I was calling a women's basketball game for Regis, and he was doing the men's, and uh, along with our Brian Roth. So, tremendous uh, person in Denver broadcasting history. We got changes for the blue. Mech who takes it. I think we have wholesale changes. Everybody's going to take a seat. So, Watt will return. No, Van Geitenbeek stays. The two Highlands Ranch players, number three, Watts. Number five, Tommy Olson back in along with uh, number nine, Sam Deem, screening Galloway for, from Horizon. And number 10, Madison Hemma from Castleview. And Tommy Olson finally connects from behind the arc. Nice uh, position underneath by Welch as she was trying to, to establish herself against Watts but couldn't get it to go. Oh, tipped a little bit. Deem says, I got it, lays it in. Time's running out on the show. It's been something else here. Oh, Cahill gets a beautiful laser pass from Galloway. And I don't think we're gonna see Fran Belibi try another dunk attempt, unless a timeout is called and, and it's specifically drawn up. So we're gonna have a dunk contest in halftime of the boys top 20 game. Fran Belibi's going to participate. As we said, when she was a freshman, she made the first dunk in Colorado high school history. Made ESPN's uh, Sports Center. 15 years old at the time. It was her first few months of even playing basketball. And Adam Watts, fittingly, has the ball last in her hands and led all scorers here today with 17 points. And what a terrific display and show of talent. We sure appreciate you taking time to, to join us here today on some terrific basketball and fun uh, memories for both these players. We're going to take a, a moment before we close out the broadcast and have a chance to talk to head basketball coach at Valor Christian and Jessica Caldwell, who was co-head coach with Shannon Lane for the Y team. And Jessica, uh, thrilled to have you join us here. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the experience and you did the co-coach and and uh, what it uh, was like for these, for you and for these players. Sure, it's just amazing to see all the best Colorado players in one spot. You get to see them kind of here and there, and watch film or see them every once in a while play. So it's so fun to be able to see them all in one place and be able to kind of perform for everybody. I really enjoyed it, see it up close and personal, and um, Shannon's a great friend of mine, so it was fun to sit next to her and just chat basketball for a good amount of time. <laughs> yeah, it really works for everybody. That's really great. And you know, uh, for your program, my boy, you came in, and, and Valor was on the rise, and you, you, you had the final formula to your first year win a state title, oh, and then come back, which is so tough, as you know, and win a second one. And now we see you've completed four years as the head coach of Valor Christian. How has basketball changed since when you played back in high school, at Coronado High School, and then you went on, and we'll talk Baylor in a moment. Sure. You know, it's, I think what's really amazing is continue to see really, really strong players come out of Colorado, and um, it has been so much fun to be at Valor and be in the high school realm while I get to see and cycle through really incredible players. 
um, whether from my team or from the teams that we play. Um, but the consistency has been there, and there's some great top talent coming out of Colorado every single year. And I think that says a lot about the high school coaches here, as well as the club basketball program. There's just some incredible athletes, um, and it's fun to be able to continue to follow them all the way through um, the NCAA tournament. In, in speaking of the NCAA tournament, tournament I could not uh, help myself but watch Baylor last night and, and get upset by Oregon State and not think of you and, uh, and your relationship with Coach Mulkey since you're an alum of the Baylor Bears. Absolutely. Coach Mulkey and I have a great relationship and I um, communicate through text um, quite often with her and um, you know they had a, a tough year just with injuries and deaths and just a lot of different things happening and so um, you know to see their young point guard really step it up in the Big 12 tournament and come through I think they were just kind of missing um, that outside shooting presence and that loss to Oregon State just needed a couple big threes to fall and some of them fell late but just not quite there so um, it was really, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to sit back as a fan now and continue to watch the success of Baylor um, women's basketball. And I feel so proud um, as an alum and um, just as a fan of Coach Mulkey. And, and when you talked about how Colorado has solid players, do you see uh, Colorado's position continuing to grow on the national scene? I do. At, at really every level, but in that, in that primary, that D2, D1 area. I do. I think what's really unique about it is you can, again, you can kind of look at the NC tournament going on right now and, and pick out several um, Colorado players that are making their mark, that are getting time. Um, you know, Michaela at UCLA and Kyla Shook at Louisville and, um, you know, uh, uh, See Justine Hall, I uh, believe, Justine at, at Oregon. Oregon. And, and so just to know, I mean, there's there's consistent uh, um, presence deep in the run of the NCAA tournament. And so I think with that, it'll just continue to grow. And I think Colorado will continue to make its name for high school girls basketball. And what can we expect from Valor Christian next year? <laughs> you know, thankfully, we get our um, star point guard back um, who tore her ACL midway through the season. So that was a loss um, for us. But um, we had some great seniors that came through and we pushed kind of as far as we could and ran into a tough Pueblo South team um, and, and went down in the Sweet 16. But I'm really proud of our kids for rallying and, and feel like we'll be really young and we're making that jump to 5A. Oh, so that is God, going to be right. um, <laughs> new and exciting and challenging for us. Um, so I think we have some growing years ahead of us, but we're thankful we have really good uh, – we have really great girls and just have an awesome staff, and I think we're just going to continue to get better and better. With the jump, what league will you be in? We'll be in Jeffco. It'll still be um, Jeffco. Jeffco 5A. Okay. Um, so we'll make that leap and <laughs> jump right into the Ralston Valleys and the Lakewoods of the world, yes. So, which is welcome to 5A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be uh, quite, you know what, that'll be interesting because that has been the last... 10 years it's either been Ralston Valley and or Lakewood they've either tied for the title mm -hmm. or one or the other has won it mm -hmm. so you could throw a wrench that's what you're hoping right you're you hoping know, to see the Eagles do that that's so. what we're hoping for so now that'll make that a, a, an interesting really interesting league thanks so much for what you do for uh, for uh, students in the academic realm and what you've done on the court um, not only as a player but particularly as a coach thanks so much again. thanks this is a pleasure to watch all these young ladies and so much fun to see just again the um, Colorado high school basketball just continue to grow and um, as a hometown girl, it's pretty special. Thank you. That was uh, Valor Christian head coach Jessica Caldwell, who, as we said, played her prep years at Coronado High School down in Colorado Springs and went on to play for the Baylor Bears. And now is the head coach at Valor Christian, as you heard her say, 5A next year in Jefferson County. Well, it's been a lot of fun here today to uh, experience the show. And it brought to you by uh, BioCats. Uh, Jerry uh, Howard has done a fantastic job and assembled a great crew. And uh, we thank our executive director, Phil Mildren, and the crew at Stream It Sports. I'm Mary Kay Morrow. Stay with us. There'll be more action as the boys of 4A, 5A, Top 20. Coming up next, Mari uh, Cesario will be on the call. I'm Mary Kay Morrow, and from Metropolitan State University of Denver, have a good rest of the evening. That concludes our broadcast of the show, Girls Basketball All-Star Game. The show is a presentation of BioCat Sports Network, producers of showcase events and academic elite camps for student athletes. This has been a Stream It Sports production.